A lot of people will tell you, whether you've asked for their opinion or not, that modern supercars have it all wrong. They've all got too much assistance on board, they're all too heavy, and everything should have a manual gearbox. Well, if that sounds like you, I've got good news. Noble have built you a new car. This is the Noble M500. And I reckon this is the world's simplest supercar. They don't come along very often, do they, Nobles? About once a decade, really, we get one of Leicestershire's finest. There was the M12 in 2001, the M600 in 2010, and now there's this. And the M500's mission? Well, it's to satisfy the kind of people who said to Noble, yeah, I'd like to buy an M600, but ideally, I'd like to be alive to tell people about it afterwards. So, while the M600 used a mad twin-turbocharged Volvo-derived V8 to deliver a 650 horsepower, 220 mile an hour wallop, the M500 is quite unusual for a modern day supercar. Why? It's got less power than the old model, that's why. And as a result, it's not as quick as the car that came before it. That's right, under here, in the engine bay, there's no big old Volvo V8 anymore, no. This is a Ford EcoBoost V6. So you get twin turbos. It's uh, not quite the same engine as they put in the Ford GT. This is actually closer to what you get in the Raptor truck, but you still get over 500 brake horsepower, all of which arrives at these 20 inch rear wheels with a little bit of traction control in the middle to help you out. Problem is when you want to stop, the M500 has no anti-lock brakes but we'll actually come back to the mechanical bits and bobs in a moment. While the M500 is parked up, we need to have a think about how it looks because no matter how much you prefer your supercars medium rare and simple, styling does matter. So what do we reckon? Well, for me, I think the M500 is quite a handsome car if a bit angle sensitive, but um, there are quite a lot of details cribbed from other cars, aren't there? Have you spotted? A few of them so far. This? Yeah, you're right. Headlights from a C7 Corvette and the tail lights, they are from a Citroen C4 Picasso. Now, we could take the mick out of that, but I don't mind. If Noble are spending money, um, well, on how the car drives, that's where it should be spent. And so what if they buy some headlights that are homologated in the countries they need them to be and it saves them some time and money? That's fine by me. What about this? Come here. Was there a suggestion box in the factory asking everyone what their favorite supercar was. I think there might have been because big flank here is full on Bugatti Chiron. This strake in the intake, quite McLaren 12C. And then you remember I mentioned the Ford GT earlier, that's not a Ford GT engine, but we have got some Ford GT flying buttresses blending round into a kind of Lotus Evora-ish rear wing and where all the details come together at the back that's where i'm not so keen but i have to say this thing has got a huge amount of attention today that's why we've had to run away to an old military base for some privacy and every time someone has stopped us and gone wow what is it they always guess a really huge price noble wants to charge 150 you know probably under 200,000 for this but all the guesses we've had from passers-by have been way over a quarter of a million quid so you'd have to say the m500 definitely looks exotic enough. And um, also, it might be more practical than you think as well. Bear with me. Let me just reach in here. Oh yes. Pop open this huge bonnet and we find, I mean, that is a decent sized boot for a British cottage industry supercar, right? And that's not loose wiring in there, by the way. That is a convenient plug so you can connect your trickle charger over the winter. I mean, you know, attention's detail, practicality. The British can do it as well, sort of. And since I was in here briefly, let's have a proper look around. I want to get my other leg in. Oh yes, all of you who think that supercars are too complicated these days, this is what you want, right? It is pretty, I wouldn't say basic in an M500, let's call it focused. Everything's covered in dark Alcantara, you've got some contrast stitching. In fact, if I wake it up, you can see the screens come to life. So actually some quite cool, very clear dials there. This will have your Apple CarPlay if you 
want it. And then this touchscreen here does your climate control. So by putting things in screens, they don't have to just steal all the buttons from a Ford. There we are, I'll just turn the air conditioning off while I'm talking to you. There are some Ford buttons if you go looking for them, the indicator stalks, the lights, the locks. But ultimately, are people expecting it to be as bespoke as a Gordon Murray T50? I don't think so. Let's get the basics out of the way. Look how much headroom I've got. I'm six feet tall, I've got plenty of space. I've got nicely trimmed armrests. Look at that, remember handbrakes? Remember gear levers? We'll come back to that. Problems, I think, are just the packaging. I'm six foot tall and there's nowhere for my left leg unless it's on the clutch. You're kind of getting trapped a little bit on this steering column shroud here. And this is as high as the teeny tiny little steering wheel goes. I can't quite see all of the rev counter. I can see up to 2000 RPM and then I can see the red line. So that's my excuse in a moment when I keep crashing into the rev limiter. Anyway, should we go for a drive? Okay, now I've got something to get off my chest right away. This M500 is the prototype, the prototype. Noble's not a company that can afford to have a fleet of cars testing in the Arctic and Death Valley all the time. They've got this one in the world and it has been built to do the hard yards. So it's been hand built basically. And that means if you see some dodgy panel fit, that's why. I have to say, I have driven British sports car prototypes and customer cars that are way worse off than this for build quality. I'm really impressed. It hasn't even got any squeaks or rattles. But the fact that it's a prototype means there are a few things that aren't quite finalized. For example, <laughs> grow up, talk to people. Right, for example, the M500 you're sitting in now, it's a bit heavier than the customer cars will be. This one's about 1400 kilos because of some thicker fiberglass panels. The customer cars, well, they reckon they can be 150 kilos lighter. And, um, well, they're going to be rocket ships because this is not slow. Oh, no. <laughs> what a feeling. Boost is unbelievable. Now, this car might be a prototype, but it does stick to some core noble principles. So the chassis, no expensive carbon fiber tub. This is a steel space frame, very similar to the one that was in the M600, actually. Over that go your fiberglass panels and there are no driver aids really to speak of. There's a little bit of traction control, but I'm not sure I'd lean on it. There are no anti-lock brakes. There is no airbag. There's also, as you might have been able to hear already, something going click clack in here. You see this car, because it was supposed to be the everyday Noble, was originally going to have a dual clutch flappy paddle gearbox. But as you can tell now, Noble decided to go for a manual. And I'm very glad they did. You see earlier, you know when I was being a bit rude and pointing out all the bits that are on this car that were nicked from other cars? Well, the gearbox is also one of them, but I'm not complaining one bit about that. They've actually taken the Graziano six-speed manual gearbox that you used to get in an Audi R8 or a Lamborghini Gallardo. And if you don't believe me, stick your head in the engine bay. Have a look at the gearbox casing. It's got an Audi and a Lamborghini badge on it. And that means that this shift is glorious. And what a unique selling point for Noble. It doesn't just have to compete on being cheaper than the rest. It's got something that no other supercar, no other mid-engine car at all, has now got. It's got a stick. And for everyone who said, oh, I wish more cars were manual, here is your car. They've done it. Put your money where your mouth is. This shift, okay, the throw's a little bit long. I'd maybe like it a bit further back down the transmission tunnel, but I am nitpicking. The noise is so evocative. The mechanical feel to it is beautiful. As you can tell, I'm already just shifting for fun. If this car had paddles, I'd instantly not be enjoying it as much as I am with three pedals and this lever here. It is fabulous. Now, since we're on a bit of a quiet road, I'm gonna break the rest of the car down and tell you what I can about it. So um, what should we start with? Start with the steering. So it is power assisted, but there's a lovely amount of feedback and communication coming back 
it's quite heavy. It's quite unusual for a supercar now, that isn't it? Everything's got super light, darty steering. This, you get quite a lot of response just off kind of straight ahead. And then as you tip the car into a corner like that, it really does weight up and you've got something to really bite into, kick back and yeah, now and again the car is deflected, but I'm sure that could be trimmed out with some setup if you wanted it. I actually think it's a great compromise for a British road. Stick it through here. Know exactly where the front end is. Yeah, sold on the steering. We should probably talk about the engine. Now you see that, that's a V6. That is not the most nape prickling noise in any supercar it was never going to be, was it? The M500 is not an engine car, it is a chassis car. We're gonna come onto the chassis because it's all good news. But the engine, what I like about it is that this is a car that celebrates the fact that it is turbocharged. That's very noble as well, going back to their earlier cars like the M12, which had this hilarious wastegate chatter. This has got the same thing. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, I don't know if the microphones will pick this up, but it, the boost builds, there it goes, and then you just get that chunter on the overrun, and then I actually quite enjoy that. It's not as fun as chasing a 9,000 RPM red line, but compared to a lot of the other turbocharged sports cars and supercars, Porsche 911 Carrera and Ferrari 296, they're always trying to hide their turbocharging with those super clever torque maps for every gear and variable vein, whatnot. I can't understand any of it, but I understand when I get in the car, I just never fall out of the boost zone. In this, you do. Plus, when the boost comes in, bang, there you go. It is not as linear as you're used to in a modern supercar. There's a bit of lag, and then bang, it really, really whacks you with it. So you've got to be awake to that, but that's all part of this car's character, I think. Whereas the Italians, they want to delicately drizzle turbo lag onto your meal, a waiter just caressing it down. This is like having a lump of cheddar slammed in your face, okay? It's not subtle about it, but it is still enjoyable. Okay, and now the M500's best bit is the chassis. Just the way it goes down a road and round a corner is beautiful. It is right up there with the best of them. Lotus, Alpine. In fact, yeah, Lotus is a good comparison because I feel like Lotus, if you're going to build an Esprit, you know, new supercar, don't bother. This has sort of nicked it from under your nose now. The body control and the compliance, the way it just gets on with a road and just deals with pretty terrible British tarmac is sensational. Honestly, I cannot believe it, particularly for a prototype. It's McLaren-like, except McLaren. Well, they use, you know, hydraulically cross-linked, actuated, adaptive dampers. This, this has got something called a shock absorber and a spring, and it's literally as good as a 720S down that road. It's a stunning achievement. Just goes to show what can be done with old school engineering, like with the turbos, like with our friend down here, the gearbox. It is super, super satisfying. And yeah, okay, the interior, I might not want to sit in every single day, but with this chassis, you could absolutely use this car all the time because just so compliant. Wow. While well, we're just burbling along, let me tell you something else. Visibility, really good out the front. I mean, the windscreen's quite narrow, but what I really like is the way the design of that bonnet falling away means tops of the front wings and therefore where the front wheels are perfectly sighted that is exactly what you need when you're placing a mid-engine supercar on twisty roads decent view in the mirrors back window not so much but then this you know screen gubbins here i've no idea how the radio works but the reversing camera is excellent there's just no understeer in this chassis at all god the british could build some really really good stuff out of other people's leftovers We are the ultimate dumpster chefs. Now you're probably expecting me to root quite hard for the home team here because I am British. This car was designed and engineered in Britain and therefore, you know, what, I'm gonna be all patriotic about it? No, I think that, well, actually, it really winds me up when people out of some sense of duty to the king 
give the likes of Aston Martin or Jaguar or Lotus a bit of a free pass when the cars aren't up to scratch. And if they hadn't, then maybe those companies wouldn't need bailing out of a crisis every 10 minutes. But yeah, I hope I've been fair. This Noble is not finished. It's a prototype. There's bits and bobs that they need to work on, particularly in here. But that doesn't mean that this car doesn't have a place, doesn't have a purpose. If they can get this out for 150 grand, this with a manual gearbox and just a sense of it being developed brilliantly with the ingredients they've got, is absolutely worthy of being the entry level analog supercar. Your poor man's Gordon Murray T50. I'm not expecting it to be an everyday car despite the big boot, even if they do sort the air conditioning out. I don't think that when the M500 does enter production, you know, the used market will be swamped with a tsunami of Porsche 911 turbos. But I still think that this is a great sweet spot for Noble to be in. They've tried doing the sports car, the M12, they've tried a full on super hyper car, the M600, but this, the M500, could be that Goldilocks moment for them. Anyway, we'll know if it does work out, because if all the people out there, all of you who think that supercars should have a manual, and no driver aids, you've got to go out and buy one. I think you should.